Welcome to Faith Center Imus. Thank you for joining us in the service today. Now, let us listen to the ongoing message. Now, are you ready to receive the word today? Now, turn your Bibles again with me in John chapter 1. For the um, foundational text of our ongoing series, John chapter 1. In uh, verse 14, it says here, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of Him and cried out, saying, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for He was before me. Verse 16, and of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. Verse 17, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Again, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now, for five Sundays now, we have been studying uh, on the message entitled, The Covenant of Grace, The Covenant of Grace. And as I said, uh, this message is important for us, especially people of Faith Center Amos, because um, I really sought the Lord about the grace message that is suitable for you. In other words, I, I made it a responsibility na yung grace message na isi-share ko sa inyo, yung ni-reveal na kung paano ni-reveal ng Panginoon sa akin. Now, we have been hearing other grace ministers na naging bisita natin, that all their principles are very good. Magaganda yung kanilang mga prinsipyo. But then again, as a pastor, meron po tayong, uh, meron po akong naintindihan na spiritual condition nating lahat, and I know what kind of food ang talagang suitable para sa inyo. So, maaring maging iba ng konti ang approach ko from the other grace messages that you have been hearing, but basically, it is the message of grace. You see? So in other words, if some people can, uh, uh, are watching this video or probably listening to the audio um, at hindi sila nag-agree sa ilang mga sinasabi ko, well, actually, the message is not actually for them. It's for the people of Faith Center Imus. Kayo naman pong taga-Faith Center Imus, ang hinihiling ko lang po sa inyo, I always say this, uh, yung full cooperation natin. Because uh, ito pong uh, message na ito needs your full understanding Okay, dahil medyo uh, we are uh, eating the meat of the word, hindi po yung, meat, hindi yung milk of the word. So we're eating the meat of the word. So we really need to concentrate. Because there are some things that we are going to learn today and the coming Sundays na medyo mayroong ka- konting kalalaman. Hindi naman malalim na malalim. I'll, I'll, I'll be, uh, ika nga yung uh, maipaliwanan ko ng maayos. But then, I need your full cooperation. And do not, please, do not judge the book by its cover. Listen to the whole series first, and then from your notes, from your uh, uh, CDs or whatever, uh, you can now go back to the series and then decide kung ito nga ba ay para sa'yo o, para, o para, hindi para sa'yo. Kung hindi para sa'yo, praise the Lord. Wala tayong masamang tinapay. But the point is, wag mo kagad isara dahil merong isa na kong nasabi na hindi ganung malinaw sa inyo. Go back to it, okay, and you will find out yung ano yung sinasabi ni Pastor. I always teach, as you know me, I always teach based on the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, last Sunday, we started talking about the subtopic entitled, The Law Kills, But the Spirit Gives Life, yung part one. So, I'll just give you a short review of what we talked about last Sunday before we continue. Uh, we learned last Sunday that the law was not designed to give life. Hindi po dinisign ang law of Moses, including the Ten Commandments, para magbigay ng buhay. It was never designed to do that. But rather, it was designed to kill, to produce death. Now, how many of you, kung kayo tatanungin, ano bang mas gusto ninyo? Nagbibigay ng buhay, nagbibigay ng kamatayan? Of course, 
maring lahat tayo magsabi, of course, yung nagbibigay ng buhay, Pastor. And yet, most of us, we came from a religion that placed us under the law that is actually producing death sa ating buhay without us even realizing. You see? Kasi nga naman, yun ang nakalakihan natin. But it was not designed to give life, it was designed to kill. In fact, I said last Sunday, to attempt to achieve eternal life through the law is to commit suicide. Para nagpapakamatay ka. Kung akala mo, ang kaligtasan ay sa pamamagitan ng paggawa ng batas ni Moses. You see? And we have learned that uh, in our past Sunday's uh, sermons. And in fact, I mentioned last Sunday that the law, the law of Moses, is called the ministry of death. Imagine, tawagin man namang ministry of death. You see? Of course, ang message natin last Sunday, the law kills, the spirit gives life. And also, we learned that the law is called the ministry of condemnation. Why condemnation? Because every time you try to keep the law, you fail. You will always fail because ang law na yan eh, absolute perfection, unattainable standard. Si Jesus lang ang makaka-fulfill niyan. So when you fail, you sin. Now, when you sin, Satan comes to condemn you. Nandiyan, si Satanas kasi taga-usig yan eh. You see? So, uh, pag pinapatuloy mo pa rin ang paggawa ng law, eh, nangyayari, sigurado mag-fail ka. And at the same time, pag-fail mo, nagkakasala ka, Satan will come i- uh, immediately para i-condemn ka, usigin ka. See, kaya po tinawag itong ministry of condemnation. Now, I mentioned last Sunday, compared to the grace, okay, the law really had no splendor, no glory. There is no point of comparison pagdating sa law at saka sa grace, sa spirit. And also, we learn that the law is fading and passing, but grace is to stay forever. Now, with that said, con- 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 uh, comparing the law of Moses to the uh, law of circumcision, especially by the Jews, di ba sabi ng mga Hudyos, Acts chapter 15, sabi niya, unless you, uh, uh, you perform the circumcision by the tradition according to the law of Moses, you will not be saved. In other words, sa, sa sinuturo ni Paul, the salvation by grace through faith, kay Jesus Christ, sabi ng mga religious leaders, hindi kayo pwedeng maligtas ng panipaniwala lang. Ang mahalaga, kailangan kayong magpasircumcise ayon sa tradisyon ng batas ni Moses. You see? So parang hinahaluan ng mga religious leaders ng sarili nilang tradisyon, ng sarili nilang effort, sarili nilang lakas yung kaligtasan. But as I said, from the Old Testament, even up to the New Testament, ang salvation is always by grace through faith. It's by the finished work or the future work of Jesus Christ. So we learn about circumcision. As sinabi ko yung circumcision, parang yan ang ibig sabihin ng keeping the law. Okay? What is circumcision? I mentioned last Sunday, Circumcision in the Bible means having a covenant with God. I know there are meanings of circumcisions sa ibang mga libro, pero what I'm talking about is the meaning ng circumcision based on the Bible. Circumcision simply means having a covenant with God. Now, uncircumcision, on the other hand, siyempre, kabaliktaran. It means no covenant with God. The, the good point sa circumcision, lalo na sa mga Jews, is that they understand their covenant with God they, they come out bold sa mga decisions nila. There was this uh, story about David and Goliath na itong Israelite ng mga time na yun, uh, we learned last Sunday, na hindi nila maalala yung COVID nila sa Panginoon because of their fear towards Goliath. Biro mo, nine feet tall ba naman ang laki? Ha? Hinahamon sila, tinotont sila, 40 days, 40 nights. You see? But then again, si David dumating, isang... Sabi ng scholar, eh, 17 years old lang, dumating, and then sabi niya, sino ba itong higante na ito na wala namang covenant sa Panginoon na, na tinatakot ang buong armies ng Israel? So notice, alam ni David yung kanyang benefit as a covenant child of God. You see? Covenant. Dahil may covenant siya. Eh. Kaya meron siyang ganung lakas ng loob. Okay? Now, we also learn that basically, circumcision is a sign or a seal of the covenant. And it started with Abraham without the law. No, wala pa yung law. Moses, 
ay 430 years after pa nung, nung dumating yung law. Pero panahon ni Abraham, meron ng circumcision. Okay? It started with Abraham with the covenant of promise. Kaya lang, yung circumcision, inincorporate, ihinalo, isinama dun sa law of Moses. And it is basically a tradition of the Jews. Okay? And of course, we learned last Sunday that with Abraham, Abraham was justified, was considered righteous by God even before he was circumcised. Bago siya sinircumcised, he was already saved. So circumcision or uncircumcision does not, does not really matter because he accepted or believed God and it was accounted to him unto righteousness before he was circumcised. Yun pong ating pinag-usapan last Sunday. Now, we'll, let's continue this uh, morning. Uh, the title of the subtopic today is The Law Kills, The Spirit Gives Life, Part 2. Part 2. And we have a part 3 on this. Mahaba pa ho kasi tayo. Now, turn your Bibles with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, or 3 rather. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's read verse 6. Sabi dito, Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. For the letter kills. Ano ba ito letter na ito? This is referring to the law. The letter of the law. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Let me read this uh, in the contemporary English version. The same verse. Uh, verse 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Listen carefully. He makes us worthy to be servants of His new agreement that comes from the Holy Spirit and not from a written law. After all, the law brings death, but the Spirit brings life. So it doesn't matter when we talk about circumcision or un uncircumcision, when we talk about salvation, justification, or being made right with God, hindi po nakabase sa circumcision or uncircumcision. But we have learned, which is very important, ang mahalaga sa lahat, yung circumcision of the heart. Circumcision of the heart. That is what's important. Now, turn your Bibles with me in Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Circumcision of the heart. You see? Yung circumcision of the heart ang pinakamahalaga. Look at verse 25. Romans 2, verse 25. For circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law. But if you are a breaker of the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Drop down to verse 29. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. So what's important, brothers and sisters, sa ating buhay ngayon, na naki Kristo tayo, hindi yung circumcision of the flesh, kundi yung circumcision of the heart. Now I would like to read verse 29, sa contemporary English version. To be a real Jew, you must obey the law. True circumcision is something that happens deep in your heart not something done to your body. So yung ginagawa raw sa ating puso, hindi yung ginagawa sa ating katawan. Circumcision of the flesh, ginagawa sa katawan yan eh. Hindi raw yun ang nagmamatter. What matters is circumcision of the heart. Turn your Bibles with me in Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 2, let's begin reading in verse 11. Colossians 2 verse 11. In Him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. Without hands. Okay? By putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. You see? Yung made without hands, yung circumcision natin is of the heart. 
not because of the letter of the law, but of the heart. Drop down to verse 14. Having wiped out that hand, the handwriting of requirements, which is the law, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. So yung letter of the law, which produces death, eh, yun ay contrary sa atin. Labag sa atin yan. Okay? Ang ginawa ni Jesus, we nahip away na nga niya yan eh, Para hindi tayo mapailalim sa law. But the sad part is, even in our time today, there are many people that think that salvation, righteousness, spirituality is by keeping the law. Okay? Kaya ngayon, maraming tao ang medyo hindi alam kung saan talaga sila pupunta based on, because it is based on their actions, not based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now, many of you know, itong nakaraang linggo, meron isang religious icon na pumanaw. Okay? And uh, of course, nakita ko po sa TV yung, uh, yung mga taong dagsa ng dagsa doon sa kanilang lugar para masilaya ng kanilang leader. And then, uh, what's so sad was, tinatanong ng mga media, yung mga taong nagpupunta. Ang tanong sa kanila, bakit naman kayo ganito kadiboto sa inyong paniniwala sa iglesia na ito? Sabi nga noon. Sabi niya, eh kasi uh, na, natulungan kami ng, ng ganitong katuruan sa ganito iglesia. At saka kasi, hindi ka maliligtas, sabi niya. Hindi lang isa, marami nagsabi, hindi ka maliligtas kung hindi ka umanib dito sa particular na iglesia na to. So yun ang sinasabi ko. It has nothing to do with your ability, your own work, but it has something, salvation has something to do with the finished work of Jesus Christ. Gawa ng Panginoon yun eh. Hindi ikaw. Hindi ba yung basta pumasok ka lang sa isang iglesia. Ang pag sinabi kasi nilang iglesia, yung mismong building. Dapat daw kabahagi ka ng iglesia na mayroong building. So what is sad, dahil mayroong mga tao, na marami pang tao na ang paniniwala pa rin, ay eh, kailangan natin gawin ito. Kailangan kaanib tayo. Kailangan natin itong gawin. Huwag natin gagawin ito. Which is all under the law. But the problem is, sabi nga ni Jesus, we nipe out ko na yan eh. Yung requirement, handwriting requirement eh. Iwina, inalis ko na yan, is pinako ng araw sa krus yan eh. Para hindi na tayo magpasa ilalim. You see? So that's the sad part. Merong mga religion today, that uh, and even sa ating pinanggalingan na religion before, na meron tayo, inilalagay tayo under the law, and realizing na pag hindi raw natin ginawa ito, ginawa yan, ito mga bagay na ito, ay hindi tayo mapupunta ng langit. But that is contrary to the message of grace that Paul actually is preaching to the people in Colossae, in Galatians, in Ephesians, and in, in, in Corinthians. So yun po ang may kontra eh. But, kung totoo nung araw yan kay Paul, totoo pa rin sa atin ngayon yan. Pero at then, pinasa natin, we nipe out na ng Panginoon. Now, circumcision of the heart means a new creation or born again. Born again. Ibig sabihin niyan, circumcision of the heart means born again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, ano sabi? If anyone be in Christ, he is a what? New creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. New creation. Okay? Now, turn your Bibles with me in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Look at this. Verse 15. Galatians 6 verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. But a new creation. Now, listen carefully. I would like to quote this in the Amplified Bible. Amplified Bible. For neither is circumcision now of any importance nor uncircumcision but only a new creation, the result of a new birth and a new nature in Christ Jesus, the Messiah. So, malinaw na malinaw sa binasa natin dito, the circumcision of the heart means being born again. Now, ito kailangan maging malinaw pa rito sa mga taong ngayon today. 
may thinking sila na ang pagiging born again is another religion. Galing ka lang sa isang religion, lilipat ka lang sa isang religion. Listen to me, ang pagiging born again is having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yung kilala mo siya, kilala ka niya. Marami kasi ngayon tumatawag, Panginoon, Panginoon, ginagamit ang pangalan ng Panginoong Isus. Di ba sa, sa Bible, sa Matthew chapter 7, sabi ng isang kausap ang Panginoon, sabi niya, Have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Huh? We, they were creating wonders in the name of Jesus. And yes, sabi ni Jesus, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Magsilayo kay sa akin, gumagawa ng kadiliman, hindi ko kayo kakilala. Imagine, imagine mong all your life, akala mo, ikakilala mo ang Panginoon, ginagamit mong pangalan na pagpapalayas ng demonyo, ginagamit mong pangalan sa pagbibigay ng hula, and yet, hindi naman pala ang Panginoon, ang tunay na Panginoon ng buhay mo. That's what religion is producing sa mga tao today. You see? Oh, ayaw, sigurado sa'yo pagdating ng panahon, hindi gustong madinig na mga religyosong tao na masabihan sila, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Hindi kita kilala. Kasi ang sinasabing personal relationship, yung hindi ka lang naniwala, tinanggap mo ang Panginoon. Can you say amen? You see? Kasi kung ang pag-uusapan lang natin, paniniwala. Sabi na iba, naniniwala ako kay Jesus, naniniwala ako na may Diyos. Eh, walang iniwan. Ganon din naman ang demonyo. Sabi sa James chapter 2, verse 16 eh. You believe there is one God. Okay? The demons also believe and even tremble. So, does that mean dahil naniniwala na may Diyos at naniniwala din ang demonyo na uh, ang Diyos ay buhay, eh, maboborn na gina sila? Of course not. Hindi p- p- pwede ba naman maboborn na gina ang demonyo dahil naniwala? Naniwala nga sila na may Diyos, pero hindi nila tinanggap. Yan ang kalagayan ng mga buhay ng tao sa salibutan ngayon. Oh yes, they may know Jesus the name. They may know God exist. Okay? But they have not received Him. That's why God does not know them. Hindi mo pakikinabangan ang pinaniniwala mo lang nang hindi mo nire-receive. Very simple example. Kunwari, gutom na gutom ka. Okay? And then, nakita mo may isang mesa, punong-puno ng pagkain. At sabi mo sa sarili mo, naniniwala ako na pag kinain ko ang pagkain na nasa mesa, mabubusog ako. Tama ba yun? Pero listen to me, tamang naniwala ka na pag kinain mo yun, mabubusog ka. Pero mamamatay ka sa harap ng lamesa na yun kung hindi mo isusubo. Can you say amen? Kung hindi mo i-receive, bali wala ang paniniwala kung hindi i-receive. The receiving part is the acting part. Yung bahagi natin. Kahit sabi mo ang sasarapan ng nakalatag na pagkain dyan. At sabi mo, naniniwala ako. Pag kinain ko ito, mabubusog ako. Pero bumila ka pa ng isang libong taon, ikamamatayan mo na yan, hindi ka mabubusog nang hindi mo tinatanggap yung pagkain. Can you say amen? It's as simple as that, brothers and sisters. And there are many people like that in the world. Nakala nila eh, sila ay nasa Diyos na dahil nandun sila sa kanilang relihiyon. You see? Pinipilit nila. I remember my father, yung daddy ko po. Nung uh, uh, ilang panahon bago siya uh, namatay, sinishare ko na po yan eh. Dahil siyempre, sila ba naman hindi gusto share ng kanyang ama, di ba? And then, sabi ko sa kanya, uh, ito po, ay ngayon, uh, hindi naman po ito relihiyon eh. Ito'y, ito'y, ito'y isang uh, relasyon sa Panginoon. And sabi niya, alam mo anak, sabi niya, maganda yung ginagawa mo. Sabi niya, maganda yan. Nakikita ko yung pagbabago sa buhay mo. Sabi niya, kaya lang, hayaan mo na ako. Huwag mo na akong pakialaman sa aking relihiyong katoliko. Kasi ako'y dito pinanganak. Dito na rin ako mamamatay. Yun ang, yun ang sabi niya eh which is usually yun ang salita ng mga, mga matatanda, di ba? Dito ako pinanganak, dito rin ako mamamatay. Sabi ko ngayon sa kanya, hindi ko siya kinundem, hindi ko siya kinontra, sabi ko lang sa kanya, kaya lang dad, isipin mo lang ito. 
Isipin nyo lang ito, sabi ko. Hindi ba meron tinuro sa atin? May tinuro sa iyo si Lolo. Kinuwento niya sa akin dati, matagal na. May tinuro sa kanya si Lolo na na-realize na, 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 na niya in the long run na hindi pala tama. Kaya raw, sabi niya sa akin, nung malaman ko nga hindi na tama, hindi ko na tinuro sa inyo. Isi? Siyempre, meron ba namang ama na nung all his life natutunan niya dahil sinabi ng kanyang ama na ito'y ganito, yung pala nung ma-realize niya, hindi tama. So ang isang mabuting ama, hindi mo na ituturo sa mga susunod mong anak. Can you say amen? Siyempre, itatama mo na yung anak mo. Amen! So sabi kong gano'n, oh, naalala niyo yung sinabi niyo sa akin, yung sabi ko sa kanya, eh paano kaya? Paano kaya? Kung yung natutunan niyo sa relihiyon niyo, eh mali. Meron kayang pag-asa pang mabago yan kung mamatay kayo nang wala ang Panginoon sa buhay niyo? Of course, dahil siyempre, father mo siya, anak ka lang, hindi ka masyadong pinapansin, pero I think nakapaglagay ako ng question mark sa kanya. Paano kung mali? Yun lang ang tanong ko. Eh, paano kung mali? Kasi ang basihan yun lang, eh, sinabi ni Lolo, sinabi ni Father, sinabi ng mga kamag-anak natin. Sumunod lang kayo. Pinalaki kayong ganyan. Pinana kayo kamong ganyan. Hindi mo alam, hindi ka nakapamili. Eh, paano kung mali? Sabi kong ganun. Paano kung mali? Yun ang iniwan ko sa kanyang tanong. And eventually, after a few years, na-born again po ang Father ko. Eh lang nakakalungkot nga lang, isang taon na lang, he went home to be with the Lord. Hindi niya na-experience yung abundant life. You see? But sabi ko kahit na, at least na kay Lord. Can you say amen? amen? Kaya lang sinasabi ko dito, ganun din sa sinasabi ko sa inyo. Eh paano ko ang pinaniniwalaan ng mga tao sa sanlibot na ngayon? Eh mali. Paano? Pwede bang pagdating dun sa judgment ng Panginoon eh, magturo sila ron? Na sabihin nila, eh kasi sabi ng lolo ko eh. Ito ang sabi ng nanay ko eh. Ito ang sabi ni Monsignor. ba? Sabi ko nga sa inyo, huwag kayo magtuturo sa langit, baka mamatanda kayo. Pagdating sa langit, ikaw at ang Panginoon lang ang mag-uusap. Hindi yung ginawa ng lolo mo, hindi yung tinuro ng nanay mo, hindi yung tinuro ng kusino-sino sa pamilya mo ang tatanungin ng Panginoon sa iyo, ano ang ginawa mo? Kaya sabi ko nga sa inyo, di ba, marunong ka namang magbasa, but hindi mo basahin ang Biblia? Marunong ka namang, uh, tawag dito, manalangin, but hindi ikaw ang manalangin? Gusto mo ibang tao pa nananalangin para sa iyo? So at least, meron kang panggagalingan ng pinaniniwalaan mo. Hindi ka gaya nung, nung unang panahon ng father ko, sabi niya, pinanganak akong ganito, I, mamamatay akong ganito. Eh, paano nga ako mali? Paano ako mali? Isang beses lang yan eh. Hindi naman kayo pwede, hindi naman kayo pusa eh. Gusto ko sabihin sa kanya, hindi naman kayo pusa na pag namatay, mabubuhay uli eh. Na siyang mabuhay ninyo? Isang beses, isa lang ang buhay eh. Eh, paano nga ako mali? And eventually, na-born again siya. Eh, nga lang, sabi ko nga, after one year, uh, na namatay na siya. But praise God, nasa langit pa rin siya. So, ang point is, it's not by keeping the law or belonging to a religious group that makes you a child of God or justified. It is a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yung kilala mo siya at kilala ka niya. Can you say amen? Yun ang, yun, 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 yun ang punto nun eh. Now, listen to me. I'll give you a, script, a spiritual principle. You may want to write this down. Circumcision is an outward sign of an inner experience. Say that again. Circumcision is an outward sign of an inner experience. Okay? Now, just like water baptism, kanina nagtanong siguro si Pastora kung meron sa inyo hindi pa water baptized. Now listen to me. Mahalaga pong ma-water baptize kayo. Okay? But if you don't want, you don't have to. Kaya lang, ang water baptism kasi is an, is an outward expression of an ex- inner experience just like no circumcision. It is an outward expression of an inner experience dahil na born again ka, gusto mong ihayag sa mga taong makakakita sa iyo sa pamagitan ng water baptism na talagang ikaw ay born again na. You see? Now listen to me. Okay? It is an 
outward expression of an inner experience. Now listen carefully. Eh? Being water baptized or circumcised does not save you. E may paniniwala ang Hudyo. Sabi nila, kailangan circumcised ka. May paniniwala ang ilang denomination sa panahon natin today. Ha? Ha? Sa panahon natin today, kailangan uh, nabautismo ka sa aming bautismo, sa aming church. Pag hindi, hindi ka ligtas. Meron naman isang uh, relihiyon na naman ang, ang, ang teaching nila. Kaya rin siguro lumalaki sila dahil ang teaching nila, eh, tatakuti ng tao sa pamamagitan na maraming hindi salitang takot pero sa isang banda nakakatakot nyo imagine mo sabihin ba naman sa mga members nila na kailangan mag house to house kayo ha? kada sabado mag house to house kayo kakatungan ninyo ang inyong mga kapitbahay at pagpakilala kayo sa kanila dahil ang evangelism sa kanila kabahagi ng kaligtasan the more kang maraming na na hahayag na, na hahayagan ng salita ng Diyos daw sa kanilang paniniwala mas meron kang possibility na mapunta ka ng langit ganyan din po ang mga Mormons yung kanina binabangit ko Jehovah's Witness you see? kaya ngayon yung mga tao dahil kailangan ako magawa ito para ba yung iba kailangan daw mabatay so iba naman kailangan mga circumcise sabi naman nila kailangan ako mag-evangelize mag-share kung hindi hindi ako maliligtas so it is stemming out it's coming from fear sabi ko nga pambira yung kaya sabihin ko sa church kunari ang maging pananaw natin dito sa church eh, kailangan na kayo ay mag F12 kung hindi babawasan ang rasyon ng hangin sa buhay mo Eh, sukuradong, ay, ayoko naman, ayoko na naghihinga, lo. Gusto ko yung maganda ang aking paghinga. Kaya ngayon, mapipilitan ka na mag-sell. Kasi involved na buhay mo, eh. Can you say amen? And yet, hindi ganun ang prinsipyo na salita ng Diyos. Pero yun ang tinuturo ng, ng, uh, ng uh, sanlibutan, ng relihiyon, ng tradisyon, even ng mga denomination na nagsasabing sila'y mga naniniwala sa Panginoon. Which is so sad dahil marami pa rin naniniwala. Sabi ng Lord sa akin, kasi pag nakita mo, dami pa rin tao, sabi ng Lord sa akin, yan ang tinatawag na deceiving spirit. Nadadaya sila. Biri mo yung, yung, yung icon na binanggit ko kanina na namatay last week. Ang paniniwala nila si Kristo, tao lang eh. Amen? I'll show you. Turn your Bibles with me in 1 John chapter 4. Tao lang eh. Yun ang paniniwala nila eh. As you turn your Bibles in 1 John chapter 4, di ba sabi ng John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the what? The Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Yun ang sinabi ng John 1, 1. The Word was God. Now, verse 14 on John 1, ng John 1, ang sabi ng Bible, the Word, o pwede sabihin, God, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Can you say amen? Because the Word and God are basically one. Amen? Iisa yan. Ang Word at saka ang God, iisa yan. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, ibig sabihin, yung Word at saka God, iisa yan. Verse 14 and John 1, And the Word and God became flesh and dwelt among us. Look at 1 John chapter 4. Tinan nyo ito. And yet, ang paniniwala ng reliyon na yun ay kontra sa sasabihin dito sa 1 John chapter 4. Look at this. Verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they be of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ, which is the Word, has come into the flesh, is of God. Sa Diyos daw yun, pagka merong hinahayag na si Kristo raw, na Diyos, ay nagkatawang tao. Can you say amen? Yun ang ating paniniwala eh. He is the Word, Jesus is the Word, and the Bible tells us that the Word is God. So, ito rito, 
Tayo raw ay sa Spiritu ng Diyos, verse 2, if we are to confess that Jesus Christ, which is the Word, has come in the flesh. It is of God. Now look at verse 3. And every spirit, so may distinction, iba ito naman, iba namang grupo ito. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ, which is the Word, has come in the flesh is not of God. Sabi ko nga, linaw-linaw eh. Anli, talagang deceiving spirit lang. Imposible na hindi na nababasa ito. Talagang nadadaya lang sila. It is not of God. Para sabihin mong si Kristo yung tao lang. At hindi sa Diyos. Ay, nako. Ay, nako. In fact, ano ba tawag sa kanya? Continue reading. Look at verse 3 again. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ, the Word, has come in the flesh is not of God. Look at this. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which what you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Matakin mo, ang Antichrist, yung spiritu raw ng Antichrist, nag-ooperate na ngayong kahit sa panahon natin today. And yet, there are millions of followers Sinusundan ang isang katuruan na si Kristo ay tao lang at hindi Diyos. Nakita ba ninyo yung pinakikita ni Pastor? Amen? Ang tanong ko, eh, hindi na makita yan. Ang linaw-linaw sa Bible, hindi na makita. Yung isa namang reliyon ang sabi, si Kristo ang hell. Basta masunod lang yung kanilang paniniwala. Kono no tinuturo, which is not biblical. And yet, may mga taong sumusunod. Yun yung mga taong hindi kasi talaga binabasa ng maayos ang Bible. Kung ano lang sinabi na kanila mga ministro. Kung ano lang sinabi na kanila mga pastor. You see? Kaya hindi nyo malapun na dito sa church, bago magsimula ang service, this is my Bible. Kasi bakit? Gusto ko yung sinasabi ng pastor ninyo nang gagaling dito. Can you say amen? Kasi kung wala yan, kunwari pumunta ako rito, walang Bible, at nagsalita ko ng salita, malaking porsyento, mali ang sasabihin ko. Amen. Bakit ka mo? Eh dahil hindi ako nanggagaling sa salita ng Diyos eh. Nanggagaling ako sa dunong lang eh. Dunong ng tao eh. Kung, kung ganun ang mangyayari sa pastor ninyo, na tatayo rito, at walang Bible, at magsasalita lang ako, at ako'y maaaring magkamali, tanong, kayo naman ang pumupunta rito na walang Bible at hindi nagbabasa ng Bible, ano kaya sa tingin niyo pwede kaya kayo magkamali? Siyempre! <laughs> Siyempre! Wala kang basihan eh. Mabuti na lang, naniniwala ako sa sarili ko na tapat ako. Kung ito'y paikutin ko ang salita ng Diyos, paikutin ko na palabasin ko ang isang bagay na hindi naman sinasabi, paniniwalaan mo dahil hindi ka nagbabasa eh. Amen. Pag hindi ka nagbabasa, pag sinabi kong, sabi ng 1 John chapter 3, kumuha ka ng itlog, ipalo mo sa ulo mo. Di ba? Eh dahil medyo ganun pa yung pagkakasabi ni Pastor. Oh, exciting. Bibili ka ng sandusya ng itlo. Pa, 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 pa. Sabi, nasa Bible daw eh. Ah, nako. Kaya paikuti ng Pastor. Pagkas, pero mo, pag nagsasalita na yan, may command na yan. Di ba? Pag nagsasalita, lalo na naka-amplified, may speaker, may command yan. Kaya lahat nakatingin sa iyo eh. Di ngayon, kung ikaw eh, hindi nagbabasa ng Bible, Ipalo raw. Eh ngayon, may isa namang samahan. Itaas ninyo ang inyong mga panyo, iwagayway, para kayong robo. <laughs> ha? Kumuha kayo ng walis tambo, iwalis wis ninyong ganyan. Bumili kayo ng panyo, nakalagay, El Shaddai. At suswertihin kayo, nasaan sa Biblia yan? Meron ba sa Bible na iwagayway mo ang walis? Ang walis tambo? Amen. 
Meron ba sa Bible na bumili kayo ng lobo? Sabay-sabay natin pawawalan. Itali nyo, pray, request niyo dyan. Sabay-sabay natin pawawalan ng lobo. Makapupunta yan kay El Shaddai. Nakalobo. And yet, libo-libong tao bumili ng lobo. Ang point ko lang, nasaan sa Bible yun? Dahil yung nagtuturo, may kuman. Pinaniwalaan nila. Hindi kasi binabasa ang Biblia. Sabi ko, ito lang isang bagay masasabi ko, mapalad kayo na ako mismo na pastor ninyo may tiwala sa salita ng Diyos. Can you say amen? Na lahat ng tinuturo ko ayon sa salita ng Diyos. Praise God. So bakit ni mo basahin? You see? Hindi po yun dahil sa kailangan miyembro ka nito, kailangan ganito ang gawin mo, mabaptize ka ng paganito, kailangan ganito ang gawin mo para ka maligtas. No, it is never that way. Okay? So, being water baptized or circumcised does not save you. But then, meron pa rin talaga nag insist nag insist pa rin. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, di ba? As a child of God, you should use a spiritual uh, magnifying glass sa buhay mo para matingnan mo sa buhay mo, ano pa yung mga bagay-bagay na nakabase sa batas ni Moses. There are still areas sa buhay natin na nakabase sa batas ni Moses. Which is so sad because there is an effect pagka nakapailalim ka pa roon. Listen to this. Turn your Bibles with me in Galatians chapter 5. May natututunan po ba tayo? Look at this. Let's read verse 3. So, nag insist ka pa na kailangan gawin pa rin ito, kailangan sumunod pa rin tayo rito. Ini-insist mo pa rin na yun pa rin ang tama? Well, basahin natin ito. Galatians 5 verse 3. Paul says, And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor. Huh? A debtor to keep the whole law. Pag pinipilit mo na sa pamagitan ng kailangan ma-baptize ka ng paganito, ma-circumcise ka, o kaya ay kailangan uh, mag-evangelize ka uh, every Saturday, o kailangan maging bahagi ka ng isang iglesia na sinasabi nila, sabi niya, pagka ganun ang pinilit mo, ikaw ay may utang sa batas. Batas ng Moses. Because kailangan i-fulfill mo lahat. Eh. Hindi pwedeng isa lang eh. And the problem is, you can never fulfill it. Because the law is actually absolute in its perfection, it is unattainable sa standard. Si Jesus lang ang makaka-fulfill niyan eh. You see? So sabi rito, uh, you are a debtor to keep the law. Look at verse 4. Ang kausap mga, ang kausap mga mana ng palataya na, you have become estranged from Christ. Huh? You who attempt to be justified by law you have fallen from grace. Ah, nako. Ibang usapan na ito. Fallen from grace. Fallen from grace. Do you not know that even as a child of God, you can fall away from the grace of God? And the only, the primary reason that a person, a Christian, can fall away from the grace of God is if you try to be justified, to be more spiritual, Okay? By keeping the law. You see? Ma- malupit yan. Mahulog sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Sabi ko nga kanina sa first service, mahulog ka na sa upuan. Okay lang yan. Pero pag nahulog ka sa biyaya ng Diyos, naku po, ibang usapan yan. Can you say amen? Now, I'll show you this. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness. The word holiness also means sanctification. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. The word see simply means no one can be able to understand, comprehend God, the way God does things, yung sistema ng Panginoon. Look at verse 15. Looking carefully. Okay, pwede ko isingit dito, bagamat wala sa scripture, pero isisingit ko lang, kunwaring nandun yan na, Looking carefully with a magnifying glass, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Naku, pwede pala yun. For us to fall short 
of the grace of God. Kanina, fallen from the grace of God. Dito naman, fall short of the grace. In other words, hindi umabot. You see? Yan, yan, ang, yan ang sinasabi ng Bible eh. Pinagpapatuloy mo yung uh, uh, pag-fulfill ng law, eh magfe-fail ka dahil hindi talaga kayang i-fulfill ng natural means yan. So pag nag-fail ka, listen to this, when you are fallen from grace, you are back in the curse of the law. And when you are back in the curse of the law, it is equal to sin. Sabi ng Galatians, to turn to your Bibles there, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, look at this. Verse 10, Galatians 3 verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live by faith. Lahat daw ng gumagawa ng works of the law, cursed. And basically, you have fallen from grace, okay? And it also means you have sinned. Now, turn your Bible with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. May natututunan po ba tayo? This is very, very interesting. So, itong sin. Pag-uusapan natin na itong sin, ano? At eventually, may pag-uusapan din tayong topic na, na ang subtopic ang entitled eh. Does grace mean that you can sin? Or that you have a license to sin? Does grace mean you have a license to sin? Yan ang mga haka-haka ng iba pagdating sa grace message. Eh, eh sabi nga naman ni pastor eh. Eh, dun sa in offer ni Jesus say eh, once and for all tayo pinatawad na noong kasalanan yung ngayong kasalanan pati yung bukas na kasalanan pina- totoo yun totoo yun you see but we have to understand something about the sin na pinag-uusapan natin today sa mga darating na Sunday si explain ko sa inyo yan look at this 1 Corinthians chapter 15 so ulitin ko ah when you are fallen from grace, you are back in the curse of the law, which is equal to sin, kasalanan. Okay? Verse 56, tingnan nyo ito. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Oh, naku. Ang kalakasan daw ng kasalanan ay yung law. Yung law. You see? Ini-insist mo pa rin. Di, kailangan natin gawin yan. Dapat natin gawin to. Huwag natin ganito tayo. Mayroon tamang lugar yun eh. Kaya lang, when we talk about justification, your redemption, your righteousness before God, hindi po makukuha yan sa pag-fulfill ng law. You see? So imagine, the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. Nagiging kalakasan pa ng kasalanan ang law. <laughs> Which is parang contrary. Pag-uusapan natin next Sunday yan. Now turn your Bible with me in uh, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Praise the Lord. Let's begin reading in verse uh, 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Look at verse 14. But each one is tempted when he is drawn by his own desires, and enticed. Look at this. He is drawn by his own desires. Hindi sinabi, he is drawn by Satan. Hindi sinabi, he is drawn by his kumpare. Hindi sinabi, he is drawn by the prostitute. Sabi niya, you are drawn by your own, sarili mong desire. You see? 
Now, what will happen if you are drawn with your own desires? Sabi rito, verse 15, Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. For example, ba't sinasabi kong own desire? Yung mga lalakihan na nagnanasa sa babaeng may asawa, dinidesire nila. Di ba ang sabi ng isa sa batas ni Moses? You shall not covet your neighbor's goods and you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Di ba nasa Bible yan? At least na, alam ko nasa Bible yan. Can say amen? Di ba? Isa sa ten commandments yun eh. See? Ngayon, magkakadesire ka ngayon na sa isang tao, na, isang babae na may asawa, kung ikaw ang babae naman, isang lalaki may asawa, magkakadesire ka. See? Yun ang, yun ang humihila sa iyo na gawin yun. Yung own desire mo. You see? Ngayon, nahulog ka. Nag-conceive. Nag-conceive yung nahulog. Nangyari yung kasalanan. Nahulog ka sa kasalanan. Sabi nung binasa natin kanina sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the strength of sin is the law. Nasa law yun eh. So nahulog ka sa pagkukuvet ng asawa ng may asawa. Ngayon, nag-produce ng kamatayan sa buhay mo. Kaya sabi ko, the letter of the law kills, but the spirit gives life. Nag-produce ng kamatayan. You see? Now listen carefully. Okay? Then, verse 15, Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Bayang kasalanan pala yung lumalago, lumalaki. Nag, pwede mag-produce ng kamatayan. You see? So, wala, okay lang naman yung tinatawad na ako noon, ngayon at magpakailan man eh. Pwede na ako magkasala. Oh. You see? Now, listen to this. Romans 8, Romans 8 verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Say this with me. Uh, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Sige po tayong lahat. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Sabi naman natin, the law of sin and death. Now, listen to me. So, yung law of sin and death, malinaw na ito'y batas. It is a law. Now, I always mention this when we talk about law. Di ba sabi ko sa inyo, lahat ng law, whether spiritual or natural, will always produce the same results. Amen? Sa law of gravity, sa natural, what goes up, must come down. Hindi pwedeng mabago yan. It will always produce the same result. Hindi pwedeng what goes up, stays up. Hindi, hindi pwede. Natural law yan eh. If that is true in the natural law, how much more ang katotohanan sa spiritual, which is a law as well. Sabi, there is a law of sin and death. Law yan. In other words, kung law sa natural, nagpuproduce ng parehas na, na result, Ba yun lang law sa spiritual, nagpuproduce ng parehas na result. Walang pinakaiba yan. The natural and the spiritual, parallel yan eh. Ha? So, parehas yan. It will produce the same result. Now listen to me. What is the, the question is this. If the law of sin and death will produce the same result, which is death, the question is, what kind of death? Anong klaseng kamatayan? Anong klaseng kamatayan? Now, I have mentioned this when we were doing the series on the renewing of the mind. You listen carefully. Anong klaseng kamatayan? Marami klaseng kamatayan eh, sa Bible eh. You see? Yung klase ng kamatayan, kapag nagpatuloy sa kasalanan, ang isang mana ng palataya, listen to this, definitely, that is not talking about spiritual death. Because if that is so, most believers have lost their salvation. You see? Hindi, 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 hindi spiritual death. Look at verse 6, na eight, chapter 8, Romans. For to be carnally or fleshly minded is death. But to, spiritually, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Kapag karo makalaman, ang iniisip mo ay kamatayan ang binubunga. 
So this is not referring to spiritual death, which is separation from God. What is this referring to? The kind of death that Paul is speaking of in this particular verse is separation from the blessing, provision, and grace of God. Mawawale ka doon. Yun yung sinasabi ng fallen from grace. Fall short of the grace of God. Oh, pag tinanong, eh, pastor, blessed pa rin ba ako? Yes. Hindi inaalis ng Diyos ang blessing. Hindi inaalis ng Diyos ang provision. In fact, hindi inaalis ng Diyos ang grace. Ikaw ang lumayo. Kagaya ng istorya ng prodigal son. Di ba binag-aralan natin yan? Luke chapter 15. Merong, merong dalawang magkapatid na may ama. Buhay pa yung ama, sabi ng bunso. Bigyan mo na sa akin yung mana ko. Hindi kita maantay mamatay. So, ibinigay. And then, lumab- lumayo siya mula sa kanyang father, sa father's house, which is symbolic of the father's blessing and the father's grace, the father's provision. Lumayo siya. At sabi ni Lustay niya sa malayong lugar. Listen to me. Ang lumayo yung anak, hindi yung ama. Amen? Lumayo yung anak. Ano nangyari? Nagwala siya ron. Okay? Nahulog siya sa kasalanan. What happened was, na-separate siya from the blessing, provision, even protection, and grace ng kanyang ama. Ano nangyari? Dumating siya sa pinakamababang lugar ng kanyang buhay na ang kinakain na niya ay pagkain ng baboy. Napaka-lowest point na ng life na, nung, nung, nung uh, uh, prodigal son yun. Bino mo kinakain mo na pagkain ng baboy? Dating, dating, anak, dating ang anak ng isang negosyante na mayaman. You see? Imagine that. But it is not the problem of the father. Hindi lang father ang nag-drive away sa kanya. Siya mismo ang umalis. This, one, this man had, has fallen from the grace of his father. Nagpatuloy sa kasalanan. Ano nangyari? Nahiwalay siya, naubos, walang protection. Wala na yung, even though bless siya, hindi niya mapamanifest sa buhay niya. Even though nandun ang grace ng, ng kanyang ama, hindi siya makatanggap dahil siya lumayo. Mali ang ginawa niya. Di ba sabi ko sa inyo last two Sundays, sabi ko, ang pagbabasa ng Bible, hindi ka magiging mas righteous pag nagbabasa ka ng Bible. Pero pag hindi ka nagbabasa ng Bible, mali yun. Amen? Mali. Wait, hindi. Do I have to read it? No, you don't have to. Ang sinasabi ko lang, if you don't read your Bible, that's wrong. Di ba? Just like, if you don't want to eat, that's wrong. Because if you do not eat, you die. It's as simple as that. Amen? If, if, if you don't want to drink water, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't drink, it's wrong. Because mapupulute ang katawan mo kung puro soft drinks ang iniinom mo, kape. Walang magiging, walang uh, pang wash out ng kinakain mo. Which is, ang pinakamagandang cleansing agent, yung tubig. Kailangan mo minom ang tubig? Well, hindi, hindi kailangan. Kaya lang, mali yun. Mali sa natural, hindi maganda sa katawan. Can you say amen? So, reading the Bible, praying, hindi mo kailangan gawin kung ayaw mo. Kaya lang, mali yun. May epekto yun. Hindi pwedeng wala. Kagaya ng hindi ka kakain, magugutom ka, mamamatay ka. Kagaya ng hindi ka iinom ng tubig, palaging soft drinks, palagi, palaging kape, eventually, walang nagke-cleanse ng katawan mo, hindi proper ang cleansing ng iyong katawan, magkakaroon ng effect yan. So, mali, di ba? Ganon din itong taong to. Pinili niya yung mali. Pinili niya yung mali. Sabi ko nga, tayo, tayo lahat yung nagkakamali pa. Can you say amen? amen. Mukhang ilan lang kami ah. Ulitin ko yung tanong ah. Lahat tayo nagkakamali pa. Amen. amen. So, nagkakamali tayo. Pero I tell you this, yung pagkakamali natin, hindi pa siguro kantulad ng pagkakamali ng prodigal son. Meron ba sa inyong kanin baboy na kinakain? 
Ibig sabihin, malayo pa tayo ron. Ba't ba, ba, gusto mo pang puntahan yung ang pagkain mo kanin baboy? Kagaya ng prodigal son, sa kanyang lowest point, bumalik sa ama, tayo na hindi na natin paabutin pa ron. Sa lowest point, bumalik na tayo sa ama. At buong puso tayo sasalbungin ng ama. Praise God. Dahil mahal tayo ng ama. In fact, sabi ng Bible, di ba? Malayo pa lang, tinanaw na ng ama padating ang kanyang anak. Tinakbo niya sa sobrang excitement ang kanyang anak. At pinaghahalikan. Yung amoy baboy yung anak niya, pinaghahalikan. You see? Ganun, ganun ang ama. Ganun ang father. You see? Kaya dapat pagka nakakamali tayo, the more na dapat lalo tayong lumapit sa Diyos. Hindi lumalayo sa Diyos. Can you say amen? Eh hindi, eh ngayon eh, pagka nagkamali, lumalayo pa sa Diyos. Tapos, hindi lang yon. Pag may nagkamaling isang kristyano, yung kapwa kristyano, ididiin pa. Sasabihin, eh ba't mo ginawa yan? Masama ka pala eh. <laughs> ididiin pa lalo. You see? Pahihirapan pa lalo. Hindi nakikita yung biyaya ng Panginoon. Parang yung elder brother ng prodigal son, yung magaling mong anak, winaldas ang yung kayamanan. Tapos nung bumalik, pinaghanda mo pa. Eh ako itong nandi dito, ni isang tupang mataba, hindi mo ako pinagkatay. Dinidiin pa niya yung, yung kapatid niya. Ganyan misa ng mga kristano ngayon eh. Pag mayroon isang tao na nahulog, kilala natin na nahulog sa adultery, sa kasalanan, ididiin pa. Ipapahiya pa. See? Hindi na intindihan ng biyaya ng Panginoon. Kaya sabi ng Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2 ata yun, uh, You who are spiritual, Restore such a one who has fallen. I-restore daw natin na tayo mga spiritual, yung mga nahulog sa mali. Dahil kagaya mo, sila rin ay nagkakamali. Amen. At di mo pwede sabihin sa akin, eh, pastor, yung pagkakamali ko lang naman. Minsan lang naman ako, malilit lang naman. Minsan nagsisinungan ako, minsan nagnanakaw ako, malilit lang. Hindi naman ako nangangalunya. Alam mo sa Bible, iisa lang ang kabayaran ng kasalanan, ano? kamatayan ang kabayaran ng kasalanan hindi ng malaking kasalanan at saka ng maliit na kasalanan sabi ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan separation from the blessing provision protection even the grace of god yun ang ayo mo sabi ko nga mahulog ka na sa upuan wag na sa biyaya ng dios praise the lord romans chapter 7 look at this verse 6 but now, we have been delivered. Sabi natin lahat, I am delivered. Now, we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the law, the letter of the law. Kaya ang title ng ating subtopic today, second part, Nang the letter of the law kills, but the Spirit gives life. That is the law of Moses and the grace that came through Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? May natutunan ba tayo today? Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you have learned principles from the Word of God that will change your life forever. Our messages are available in DVD and audio formats. You may contact us at the following phone numbers. 046-471-3516 and 046-515-7459 Or send us an email, jfcf at faithcenteremus.org if you want to sow to assist us in proclaiming the gospel, you may deposit to Jesus Faith Christian Fellowship, BPI Savings Account Number, 1283-139235, Nueno Branch, Imus, Cavite. Or you may visit us at our church, 